It is a difficult thing for any father or mother to even contemplate. But imagine if your 16-year-old daughter would be gang raped. What if your daughter's a cheerleader at a local high school? She goes to an after-game party. Four powerful football players, including one of the stars, force your daughter into an empty room. They lock the doors. They threaten her. They force her to the floor. They pull off her clothes, and then they take turns gang raping her. They threaten her to be silent, but she screams for help, crying, don't, no, stop. Other students respond to her screams, finally realizing it's no joke, and they break down the door. The four rapists with their pants off escape through the window while your half-naked, violated, 16-year-old daughter lay in agony and sobs. The star football player rapist, his name is Rakeem Bolton. He's brazen enough to demand his clothes from the homeowner or he will, quote, shoot him. DNA evidence is collected and proves your daughter has suffered rape. So what do you think happens to this vicious rapist and his three fellow creatures who were caught in the act of gang rape? Is he sentenced to 20 years in prison for one of the most heinous crimes that one can commit against the innocent? Well, you have to understand, Rakim is a star player on the local football team. So pressure comes down and Rakeem Bolton is allowed to plead to a lesser sexual assault charge for leading a gang rape against your daughter. Do you think he's sentenced to maybe five years for the crime, two years, one year, one month for leading a gang rape? No, not even a day. He's put on probation and given some community service and the most severe punishment of all he's required to attend anger management classes. Rakim, the rapist, is let back into school. After all, rapists who can shoot basketballs and catch footballs are a much needed commodity in our crazy, sick nation. The story itself is symptomatic of how sick and twisted our once proud America has become. But the story is not over. The girl determined to go forward in her life despite this horrible crime against her. She went back to school, rejoined the cheerleader squad. But the tribal buddies of the gang rapists repeatedly assault her with obscene trash talk and threats, so much so that the school authorities advise her to avoid the cafeteria. Now get this, the rapist Friends call her a whore, a slut, every imaginable obscenity. They threaten her. But instead of calling them to account, the victim is told she can't go into her own school's cafeteria. Rakim, the rapist, is put back on the basketball team, and the cheerleaders are told to chant and cheer for Rakim, the wonderful. The rape victim can't bring herself to chant for the beast that raped her, and she remains silent. The rape victim is then kicked off the cheerleader squad. Her mother and father go to court to restore her to the cheerleader squad, but the judge rules that it's perfectly fine for a school to kick a girl off of a cheerleader squad for not cheering for a creature who raped her. After all, Gang rapists must be supported when they're shooting basketballs. What's happened to America? America has become unrecognizable to our parents and grandparents. There was a time when Silsby High School was entirely European-American and parents never had to worry about their teenage girl getting raped at school or at a school party, much less gang rape. 
During that time, gang rapes of 16-year-old girls were simply inconceivable. During that era, the gang rapist of a 16-year-old girl would have been given the death penalty, or at least life in prison. Not anger management classes. Gang rapes are now occurring regularly, not just in America, but in Stockholm, Sweden, and Oslo, Norway, and Amsterdam. And the perpetrators are not Swedes, they're not Norwegians, and they're not Dutch. Rapes are becoming commonplace in European cities where they never occurred before. Europe follows the example of our sick America. And America is following the example of the sick masters of the Hollywood entertainment media. Rape's an epidemic in our country. People at one time had a morality that would not allow a rapist to go free, even if he were a sports star. In fact, he'd probably be treated even more harshly for his supreme act of betrayal of the public trust. I know people will say that race has nothing to do with all of this. Do you really believe that? Who could forget the two years of front page headlines across America and all over the world when white lacrosse players at Duke University were accused of raping a drug addict prostitute black woman. Later it was admitted that the whole story was a total lie. But while white crimes across racial lines are headlined, black crimes, which are more frequent against whites, are covered up. The control media creates a digital reality exactly opposite of the real physical reality all around us. Unfortunately, no matter what occurs in Hardin County, Texas, even the people there will see a thousand times more images of the celluloid reality, the digital reality, rather than the physical reality around them. The 16-year-old cheerleader wasn't a drug addict. She wasn't a stripper or a prostitute. She was a high school kid. The news of her being raped by four sports players didn't even hardly make it outside of Hardin County, Texas. But thank God for the internet, because now you're hearing this story. Let's make this a wake-up call for America and for Europe and for the world. Perhaps the most important message for us who actually care for our kids more than our sports team is how the mass entertainment media in America instills the lowest of values into our people. It's one in which people have to find a purpose by rooting for their sports team because everything else has gone to bloody hell. And the evil morality of entertainment media is not just poisoning Americans and Europeans, it's afflicting the people of Asia, Africa, and South America, and even non-European communities in Europe and America. They're also seeing the innocent among themselves being hurt and harmed by this new and vicious morality. One day, perhaps long before the Andreas Fault does it for us, not only will Americans reclaim their values, but so will those all over the world who were poisoned by the global media coming out of Hollywood and New York. Can you feel the earth moving under your feet? Change is coming, my friends. We are awakening, and change is coming. It's time for you to defend everything that's truly precious in your life. If you don't do it for yourself and for your own honor, act to defend your children. If you don't act, you will lose everything of real value in this world. The time has come to stand up with courage and truth and honor.